So in this video I'm going to talk a little bit about diffraction gratings. Now you should already have come across these in Unit 1 of AS because it's explained how they're used to give you the absorption or the emission spectrum for hot bodies in space. So they're a device for measuring the wavelength of light. And the way they do this is by passing through a series of slits closer together and monitoring the diffraction angle. And the wavelength is proportional to the diffraction angle. So by measuring the angle, you can actually work out the wavelength of the light arriving. So if we have a look at this diagram here, so we've got the light that's being tested going through here. In this diffraction grating, there will be thousands of slits all very closely packed together. And the outcome of that is you get these different orders here. So this central one here, just like with other kinds of diffraction, as you can see on the intensity plot, is the brightest one. So that's this, and that's one's given the number n equals zero. You might sometimes see it with m equals zero as well. They're both meaning the same thing. So that's your central fringe. And then you get the first order fringe here. But notice this is what's called the single slit envelope. So if you shone this wavelength of light through a single slit, it would produce the bright central fringe um, looking like this, and the diffraction gratings fringes fit inside that one there. So as you go further away, so as you increase the N, you get lower intensity until they eventually fade into the background. Okay. So that's the setup, so I'm going to now explain where the diffraction grating equation comes from on the next slide. So we've got a wave point here, so we've got a coherent source, we've got a fixed wavelength coming through, and it's going through these multiple slits at the same time, and you see it diffracts at that point. So we're interested in knowing what the angle of direction is, so that's this one here. And some key things we know, the length here is the distance between slits, which in diffraction is, uh, grating is given the symbol D. And we know here, this is the distance between successive wave fronts, so depending on which order it is, it will have a multiple of lambda. So if we're looking at the first order, n is going to be 1, if we're looking at the second order, n is going to be 2, and so on and so on, and it's key to pick out in questions which order you're being asked for. So if we move this over here, so let's build our triangle. So essentially what we have is a right angle triangle with this angle here, and this side here, D, and I'm going to pick the first, well let's just pick, let's stay nice and general, let's not go to specific order, and we've got this side here, like that. So now let's think about the using the sine ratio. So you know that the sine of the angle is equal to the opposite over hypotenuse, so using Sokotoa. So we've got n lambda over d, which we can rearrange slightly to give you d sine theta is equal to n lambda, which is the diffraction grating equation that you need to know for the AS specification. You also need to be able to work out where what the maximum number of orders is. So if you think about it, when it comes through this slit here, in theory, the maximum angle it could, you could have, theta, this maximum theta you could have here would be theta is equal to 90 degrees because that would be the one going like this and theta being zero would be the one going like this. So if we put that into the equation, so we're going to have d sine of 90 equal to n lambda. Sine of 90 is 1, so you actually get D is equal to N. So from this, if you rearrange it, you, the maximum number of orders is going to be D divided by lambda. 
and then you round it down to the nearest integer since these orders are quantized. So they can only be round numbers and you have to round down when you get to the final answer.